everyone. I'm here with STK from Loud. And that was a very, very close map. Very back and forth. It wasn't 8-4 half, but then we brought it back to being close. What made Loud take it in the end? I feel like we adapt very good about the, what they are doing because uh, we saw some material that of, they're playing on uh, off season. So they did almost like similar things. And then like Sadak played really good in the end of the game in and off of uh, clutch moments for us. So that's it. Like Our team is like tactical stuff, but we have like all five players that are really good individually. You know? Obrigada. Thank you. Awesome, welcome back. We just had a fantastic game and I wanna take a good look at a really interesting round here. I think both teams played a fantastic map of split and this shows how they sort of counter each other out before the round and during it. First thing we're gonna to need to look at is the Viper setup the Sentinels are throwing every round, right? We've got the wall over on B and more important than anything, this orb right here. What that orb does is fully deny the solo Omen anchor that wants to chill out on backside, jump peak and just have permanent information. And it does that because they are allowed to walk out through both the right and left side. So Omen always needs a friend on that B site, unless he's playing in front of it. That's how Loud countered it. Almost every single round, we would see them trying to get forward B main position and counter it out in that way. We enter this round, 130 in, Zekin already gone. Sentinels are at a disadvantage, so they're trying to reset the round and play a little bit through mid. During this, you'll also see Kalanzine get the rotation over. Loud are reading the ideas that Sentinels are trying to throw them. But more than that, they want to re-clear out B main because as this orb goes up and now we've actually lost information in main, they're going to use dog and try to set up for a fight and get that forward space for themselves. So dog goes out through uh, B main. They know there's no one there just yet. Dog doesn't actually catch anyone, but they have mid control. So now they make the decision. We still have sky seekers. Let's get more. Sky goes back towards spawn and but through this position in spawn, it means that when the seekers go through, they're either going to go A if players are on A or B there. It's the best spot for her to be able to cast that in the round. If Sky just cast it from here, that info, oh, if it goes towards the right, players could be mid, they could be A. It's not quite as precise. So those Seekers come through and three go over towards the A side. Now we're going to stay there. We're going to lean into that B side. Loud can't fully rotate off of A because there's four players alive. So there could still be an A insert off of that early aggression. And that's why Loud wait for just a moment. But Sentinels resetting the round. John QT knows he still has time. And like he did so often through this game, he links up with his initiator player and double lurks through mid, which is really, really interesting. And look at the timing here. Loud still knows there's players in B main. We're down to 30 seconds that they have to make this split happen. And John QT, the timing is perfect. Wait for it. The Viper Orb is not up yet. They keep creeping forward. No fight is given to them. 25 seconds. It ticks, it ticks. And right here at 20 seconds, Orb goes up the same time they are trying to enter into heaven. And now here's the critical error. Both Omen and Sky are fighting on the left side of the site. There's no one on the right side to help out their Viper up in heaven. And would you look at that? The timing is just about perfect. Tens teleports through that smoke, gets the kill while the mid players are baiting, and they're able to wrap around. Tens finds two. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous round that Sentinels are able to play out for a win. It wasn't enough for them to get the win in the game overall, but man, both teams were reading each other and playing so, so well. This series is going to be awesome. And we've got a lot more to talk about. So walk on with me. Oh, I like that. We get a little <laughs> well, the walking transition over here. Uh, yeah, the one excellent breakdown. Uh, and I think it illustrates that uh, the hoops that these two teams were going through to outsmart, outplay, try and figure each other out. So it is really apropos that Sadak was just like, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is literally what happened at the end. Those two rounds diving out of a yeah. heaven on the flood retakes, just taking it in his stride. There's a reason you cannot doubt this guy. Mm -hmm. He really proved what Loud has been working on during this offseason. Yeah. I think his style of eye gelling is just so good at making a new player like QCK comfortable, right? There wasn't pressure for him to be boss, yeah. to be solo anchoring sites, to have everything on him. Instead, he was worked into this setup with a double initiator comp that enabled him to be his best and they thrived with it yeah exactly well for a second though let's uh, actually dive over and check out what's going on with coach Ka Kaplan excuse me because we got Elizabeth standing by I'm the, here with the coach of Sentinels, Kaplan. Now, Kaplan, very, very close match, and it ran away from you in the end. I was just talking to STK from Loud, and he said there was a lot of material for them to look at about Sentinels. Did you know going to this that that would be a disadvantage, or were you okay with that? 
Nah, we're, we're okay with it. We, we had a long, you know, six weeks or so after Afrika TV in Korea to make sure that we round ourselves out, have a lot of different plays, and we trust that we have game plans that are deep and we can run them multiple times, stuff like that. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And there is something to point out with what uh, Coach Kaplan said there, which was, you know, we're just going to play it. We're just going to wait our time. Like, th these things happen, right? You can't be expected to win every single game. And obviously, teams are coming in with, uh, uh, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of, of, of extra pizzazz this year. But the thing is, is that loud, man, they just... They it's read loud. out and they it, like you just can't you just can't if you're a Sentinels fan you're like oh they should definitely win this game come on man you, you, you lost by two rounds to loud cry about it like it's <laughs> fine guys like, shake like, it off and no, move on like literally that was such a good game because like you have to remember first half for Sentinels looked very very strong and I genuinely think like that was the highest quality balance yeah. for sure we have seen already it's three series let's relax people but man I really liked what I was seeing from both of those teams not just highest quality balance we've seen thus far this year in America but I think the highest we've seen from Sentinels in quite a while. They had a great game plan. I was impressed with John QT's adaptation, mm -hmm. but they lost at the end. Still, I think there's a lot of positives to Lots take from that Lots to be proud of for both one. teams. For yeah. Both, both teams, both teams. Both You're teams. Just in the middle here. Mr. <laughs> Happy Guy, do you want everyone to have fun, GB? So unbiased. I, I really appreciate that. What about can you, I GB? say? I'm just a nice guy. I just really care about everyone. You're so nice. Uh, no, but honestly, there is, a, uh, like, I feel like no matter how it went, you can't be a fan of Loud or Sensible. Look at that game and be yeah, disappointed you can't either be. way. Stop, guys. You, you just can't. <laughs> Stop it. You just can't be disappointed either way. Like, that was yes. a fantastic freaking game of Valorant. And a good preview because we're moving on to Ascent next. And what we saw on Split was both IGLs just doing some mid round master classing, right? Yeah. From John QT, the re-clears, I think, were super effective on their defensive half. And I would say Sadok, what he was able to do with such a informationless composition, just a sky, no cipher, how he was moving his team around the map was very, very good. Now we're on Ascent, where that is just the name of the game, Mimi. I was really impressed with how Zekin and Tens were holding hands and setting each other up. You mentioned in your Telestrator how so there was cute. always... <laughs> the, the sky player was always going back and assisting John QT in those mid-rounds, which meant that Tens and Zekin and walking alone on their extremity, setting each other up. I think they make a great duo, whether it's the Omen and that dive agent or what I would expect here on Ascent. My guess is it's going to be Tens KO and Zekin on the jet. I think they've proven how good they Ooh, are together. Right. And we're not surprised on one side, but on the other. I like how like Phoenix on Ascent, though. They're I don't mind. No, 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 no. So I was born and bled into Carmine Corp, and I know Sideshow is ready for the Phoenix coming into Ascent. Look, Phoenix. I like it. Six Six orbs on the ultimate. You play A main, B main, Phoenix, so good at it, you get an ult every other round or you fail. Yeah. And we saw last year how good Viper is on this map. On defense, you can molly kill Joy turrets. You can push up. On the attack, you can drop that wall when you want to have very unpredictable ability to play mid control. It frees up your omen smokes. This is a crazy comp. And the thing is, with these ascent off meta comps, it's always the toughest to play the first time. Yeah, and what's insane is that it's a Breach again without a Sentinel. Like, Breach is usually so good at making trap plays off of Sentinel information, but Loud have to work without that. They have to anticipate the moves of Sentinels, which is how they beat them back on split. It was so impressive there, and they will have to do it again. For me, this is going to be the test yet again for John QT. You get sent a surprise in Agent Select. How can you quickly figure out how your opponent's comp wants to play? Cool. Cool ideas across the board. Let's see how it plays out. I know one person, as Ender said, who really loves a Phoenix. It's Sideshow and Bren. <laughs> Let's get to it. I mean, man, I was not expecting this. Something's cooking, and I don't know if it smells burnt or if it's Michelin's chef. I don't know. It's I don't know so what the quality of it is, man. Dude, but uh, yeah. Sadak is a silly goose. He is a silly <laughs> goose. He always comes up with weird compositions. We've seen him play Breach on Pearl before. We've yeah. seen him play Unusual Ascent comps. We've seen him play the Triple Smoke comp as well on Bind that he ran. And, and yeah, what Ender's saying, there are ways to play Phoenix on this map. You've actually got a really good uh, wall flash initiation into A too. The thing is, all of the teams that have tried to run that have just generally not quite been able to get the same consistent value as the default comp. I thought we were going to see Sen run the weird stuff today. Yeah, so did I. No. So did I. What on earth?
So no contest over A main at the start, and that should allow this alt orb to be farmed. Now, of course, the Phoenix is not going to farm the alt orb. <laughs> like we were expecting. Okay. It's Sadak. I mean, the KO ult is amazing. It's the best ult that you have on the attack side. But when QCK only needs six orbs, I would expect them to be putting it into the Phoenix. A lot of space given. Nice. Towards it. Molly into the back with the aftershock as well. That's going to be... Supposedly a guaranteed kill, but here we go. Zekin was just tucked Five to the side, and with a dash eight. to disengage, that's the first kill for him. I was in trying to reposition now, taking up, re-clearing into mid. He's worried about that flank attempt, his post plan. It's important now that Kawazin stays alive, really, as well. Second knows that he repositioned there. As soon as this door opens, QCK might just go for the flash. But it looks like you want to try and fight this one forward into the smoke. That's a right click from Zelsis. Deals with him handedly now. Two years locked down into hell. Now they're going to clear him out here. Anchoring player towards the back. That's how. Kawazin's miles away. And that's a lineup being played by Les. Kawazin might be miles away here, but with the orb up as well. On top of that, the lineup, they want to try and push forwards into them. Celsius, he can stick with the fuse when this is going on. Time is really running short. Time is really running out. And Les is still alive. Weaving all over the place. A knife in action. Half of the fuse. John QT is sticking all the way through. No big time. They couldn't do it. Unbelievable! Loud actually being able to get value here, not from any of the flashes, but from the KO knife on the entry, and then the Viper yeah. lineups. So now immediately, this is going to be rattling questions throughout Sentinel's brains, especially John QT. Yeah. It's brought forwards, how do you deal with this comp now? They're going to be thinking, well, now we have to contest top mid. If they ever get into that post plan, we can't let the Viper just get off these mollies. Yeah. Or we have to be extremely rapid on the retake. Yeah. And the quicker you are on the retakes, probably the more mistakes you're going to make. Or you have to, you know, not check a certain area because you're going so quick. I mean, yeah, this is going to be a serious test for Sentinels. For the people that come up with ideas on this team, so I'm looking at John Cutie, I'm looking at Celsius in particular, this is a problem to solve. It's the same Uto combo, that is deadly. God, the grenade, the molly. So you can't swing heaven. Aftershock for hell, so you can't play hell. They've got they've got so much yeah. utility coming through. Molly um, behind her too, I mean, it's just a guaranteed kill. Where do you anchor against this cop? When Loud used to play the default composition on Ascent. Back when they had Aspas, Sassi, Pancada, when they won champions. They were amazing on Ascent. And what they did most of the time was just exec A on their attack side and run a lot of 4-1 A execs. And it sounds super simple, but if you're amazing at them, <laughs> it's pretty difficult to stop. Juicy K hunting for the kills. Two away from the ult as well with his death, only the one now. You're right, Josh, it's difficult to stop. Especially with the executes, I mean, the, the util that they just unload, I mean, the key might be just trying to fight over A main. Yeah, and I think the problem with that is that while Sentinel's composition has the Omen and the KO to fight A main, Loud can just dump Flash, Stun, Aftershock utility in there. I mean, Kawanzin alone has enough util to make it devastating to try to fight A main. In, in fact, they're already stunning off the rip. And this is one of the problems. Compositions like this, maybe they're not going to work forever. But at the start of a tournament, when teams don't know much, and you have one really good idea, oh, it's perfect. At, le at least one. I mean, yeah. we haven't seen all of the playbook by any means from Loud. It's a healthy bonus round, though, that Loud have got coming into this. That's the ult. They are going to fight over it. Okay, it's a pop flash play with Zekin playing off of it. They're really nice. So they don't fight over A main as in trying to stop Loud from getting it. They re-clear it. Pop flash back in, grab a kill, leave. So QCK's not going to be getting up to that ult this round for sure. Got it for the next. Right, the team's left in a 4v5. Shot done. Spamming, hoping, praying. That is so much damage. And the shock dart. Oh, Here it is. Two years. Sidesteps it. Oh my goodness. One step away. They're going to be able to hear this reload now with a knife as well. Do they want to try and go off this? The killjoy's been turned off. Good reactions from John Cutie, popping both Nana Swarms in yeah. time. Delays it for a few seconds at least. Now they're just trying to walk their way in. So that flash rebounds. And through the back as well. Counterflash play once more. That's Celsius just trying to set him up, but he's open. 
from all of them as well as the smoke phase. Very lucky to just grab the one, but they've still got these anchoring players to deal with. They're stunned. Maybe enough to jump onto them, but longer the aftershock. Yeah, you have no choice but to try and get out of there. He's still alive. Still survives. But drop down into the side still here. Close to the smoke. Sassy's low enough here. Kawazin could grab a second, not quite. Sassy. He's weathering the storm entirely and less low enough here. There it is. Right here. Sentinels hold on against a loud idea on B there that looked fairly interesting. I mean, just trying to contact in a little bit, right? Push the defending players back into backside and then just walk in front side and make the timing unusual, awkward. But this was a round where Sentinels reclear had already got them into a 5v4. And they were winning a lot of those rounds on split as well. It was the 4v5s where they were struggling when they lost a player early. Now QCK has that ult online. What is their plan with the Phoenix ult? Immediate knife from Zelsa's close. Just against the wall here. You can get the molly off before the knife hits. Second. It's going to be meeting some contention, and that's just all about the timings for the smokes. Fast now. That's their approach. They're going to try and hold this one down, which, listen, Tens and Zelsa's, they do that. They stop the ult for just a moment here. Aftershock towards the side, but Tens is at the back of Jenny. Dodging the flash. Still alive behind the dice as well. Reposition with the TP. John QT there to help him out. Great work, hard anchoring from Tens. Being able to dodge that flash, maintain control, allow John to come in through heaven. And QCK's ultimate didn't really get too much done because the Sen players were so fast to be able to pivot between the two angles that this split was coming through. Spike down A. It looked overwhelmingly good from Loud. The pace, the timing was all there, and yet Sen still dealt with it. Mm -hmm. And just to talk about how unusual this is, last year, Phoenix had a 4% pick rate on Ascent. <laughs> 4%. Who's playing that? Mate, I don't know. Screen? Where's the Screen? 4% coming from? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just a half buy for Loud here. Going to do some exploration. Do the usual tidy work as well. Make sure they get rid of that alarm bot. And certainly, even the teams that have run Phoenix on this map before, they haven't run it in this version of the comp. And how I'm seeing picks off Zelsis. He was just taking a little info peek out towards Catwalk. Yeah, interesting angle. Second. Everybody is one shot to the outlaw. Here. Smoke here. Ping, do they know? Half clearance. It's not being done. It's not being dealt with. Tragic. QCK is quick with it. What a mistake. And now a potential chance and open is Sassy. Who is this guy? Nine and one, by the way. Nine degrees. Snap, man. All the way through here. They're still going to be going for the plant, though. Kawazin. A rifle given up over to QCK. Three away from the ult on top of this one now. But it's up to Tens and Sassy to try and play this retake. <sighs> and it's not like QCK could courier the rest of the guns to the rest of his team. Here. So he's the only player with a phantom. They want to play up on lane here aggressively. Cover going out. Popped up. That clears it, just in case. Odin spam have right to be here. aware and cautious of that B main player. Of course, they don't know that. Paranoia now moving forwards, and there's that unconventional angle still pushing forwards. Another time to be taken to his nails. The shot, a thrifty round for Loud. And what a disaster from Sen. The previous round, immaculate play to be able to stop an A split coming through. This round, a bit of a fumble, a half clear and the whole tower comes toppling down. And this is the play that really did it. I think they assumed they would be able to see the gun barrel if there was a player in the corner. Yeah. And they just weren't correct. Now, we don't know how Loud's composition is going to work here. Is it going to be attack-sided, defense-sided? So all expectations are out the window on what a normal result is for the half. It's purely react Andy from us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be when you have comps like this. Yeah, but major yeah. ultimates up. That's a great recon. And big reveal as well from these players. I mean, they still want to take the fight here. Two years. Just facing them. Stun. A little bit delayed, a little bit late. Not quite. Just colliding with the bodies. Stopping them in their tracks. They dealt with the market players. That's an incredible reaction from Loud to go immediately for the fault line and punish those players. They don't even need to down. use the Rolling Thunder and the Null Command. Those are ultimates that you can build an entire strategy around. Yeah. And Loud have just been able to punish Sentinels and get a free A site. QCK might just choose to use this. Yeah, he is. 
just in case to clear it. Knife gets a lot of value there, though. Out towards the back of the site. Everybody off site, though, for Sen. Jump the space. Sadak with the plant. Spike planted. That's looking like an almost impossible retake. Three players off the site. No intention of taking this into the retake. No one Kawazin has that role in Thunder. And I think they're going to save. <laughs> you think? I think so. You think so? Okay. But this is now really dangerous. Yeah. I mean, Loud have just got so much going on. It's not even a problem that QCK has lost his ultimate. Yeah. They've got such major tools. Now, there is a question about how this comp is going to work on defense. They don't have a standard Sentinel. They're not going to be able to keep info in, you know, mid with a turret or an alarm bot. So they'll, they'll have to be active. But they have a comp that's just got so many flashes. They've got seven flashes to work with. Yeah. It's insane. So you could expect them to be re-clearing a lot on defense. And this is now two rounds in a row where you could say that Sentinels have been punished or made some kind of mistake that's allowed Loud to get back into the round. And, and this looked good. The recon dart with the push, I, I thought that looked like a great idea from Sen. But the reaction, the protocol to punish that was immediate from Cowan Zine and the rest of Loud. I was showing you there, the players just body blocking each other. They couldn't get out of dodge. And Bren, I want to bring up a concept here as Sentinels take a timeout, which is Sen will not have practiced against this comp. No. They have not been scrimming against people in their group. They've definitely not been scrimming against Loud. And I don't know every team's comp in the world, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure no one else is playing this. But you think about the other side, Loud will have played against the default Ascent comp almost every single time they scrim. Like 99% of the time, they're going to be playing against similar ideas to what Sentinels are doing right here. Yeah. So in terms of Loud being able to just rely on protocols they've already built, that's going to happen. But Sen have to be thinking creatively, improvising the entire time. On the fly. On a map where they've also not had very much success in the offseason. Like when I said that the map pool was great for Sentinels, I was thinking map one, map three. So this is going to be rough. Sen have got to dig deep here. Loud with the absolute sucker punch comp to potentially take it in 2-0 early days yet, but a big lead on their attack side. And they've got a bait and switch set up here, Sentinels. Yeah. They've got tens second yeah. holding next to each other with the operator. That's important. We won't expect tens there. But at the same time, Loud are not going anywhere near it. We had three players bunched up towards Gelato, could have taken their main control, and actually Sadak's taken them towards him. This Viper Wall's lovely as well. They can flash through it, they can drop it whenever they want. Really difficult to contest mid against that. They're just contacting. They're not scared of it, are they? Here we go. No command let rip. That's going to be catching. Sassy is alone, isolated onto the side. He's got so much more to do. Tucked towards stairs. He dodged it. Dodged the on. Straight towards him. Down and Sassy, the one who comes up with the goods and gets out. Regroup with the rest of his team, but he's made this so much more winnable. What about Tui's? He's on a lurk down mid right now. If he can catch Sassy or John Cutie, the round could become winnable again. Falls in the play because they need to get the spike back as well, seeking to just spam when they hear that utility right. Two years. He can make it winnable, but he has to come alive. Hunter's Fury. One connection down to the B main player. Out wide, John QT. Sidestepping, dodging. Paranoia still available. We blind them up and another smoke as well. Fakes it like he's repositioning. Two years. Still going to be stuck there. Mid, no longer accessible here. And it's going to make this retake just a bit more awkward. But with the door shut, they maybe don't have to worry about it. Flash play. Less. He plays off of it. Picks it apart and already gains the one. But still the plays now. Need to get into the side. It's traded. Sadak. He's alone towards the back. And two years needs to really speed this one up. Because with Sadak dead, it's all on him. Zelsus can stick it and it's all being covered. Sentinels navigate the danger. And they're able to convert. I love the pathing from Sadak on his ultimate there. Down mid, catching John QT, who was trying to play an anti-KO uh, KO setup in spawn. But the difference maker is Sassy here. Look how close he is to getting caught by the breach. That's nuts. And he just sprays them down. I don't know whether this is a read on where the breach ult's going to come. Or just a bit of good luck with where he was positioned. He's 14. 
and three. He is farming. And I'll tell you what, my favorite statistic is this. Sassy, absolutely goated Sova player. You know what his map win rate is on Sova with Sentinels? Zero percent. Sassy has never won a map with Sentinels playing Sova despite it being his best agent. I don't know why. I actually have no idea. I just done him dirty. Well, it's not his fault. No, it's not, I know. But... <laughs> the rest of his yeah. team was letting him down last year. Well, here we go, we're opening. Straight down mid. One of the difficulties of this flash comp might have is dealing with these operator players. You don't have the silver drone, the dart, to just try and clear off the jet operator. Zekin did find a value of it, but they walked themselves into mid, using the wall just across. TP into the back of the site. John QT, though, he is being assaulted now at a position. Util used, but a bit of a pause again into the play here by Loud. QCK, pop flash. Play around to the side to get a bit of space. It's watched for. Good punish. Yeah, I thought Zekin grabbed that one, but no, it was all sassy. Just spraying it all the way down. And guess what? John QT is still there towards the back of the site. These flashes are being sent flying long range artillery. No kills to be gained, but John QT still wants a piece of the action. Up trap around the side, all the way over him. The Sadak was lost in the source. The adaptation from nice. Sentinels to pull nice Zeltis back around so that he can play towards spawn and send these flashes over to help the person on site. Zeltis on his own is counter flashing enough to keep his teammates alive and force Loud to make plays like this from QCK and 2Es where they're getting over ambitious, throwing their lives away. And yeah, definitely it doesn't hurt that Sassy's 15 and 4. That <laughs> really doesn't. definitely doesn't hurt. So Loud for the first time here, getting snarled up. The last two rounds not gone their way. Low buy. They want to fight this? Oh my, and there we go, the punish. Might have connected, of course, but now retreating in order for tens. Backs away, he does have reinforcements arriving, but they were just there for the orb. Sentinels had success refighting a main when it was second, because he could dash back out again immediately. But that time it's Zelsis and his feet are glued Double to the floor. Spike. Stuck in a molly. And Loud slow things down. Taking that breather. Doesn't feel too much like an eco anymore with three rifles online. Now, picking up that upgrade in main. Drone. Enemy. Don't break it. Spots the two of them. And now it really alerts them that there's going to be potentially an A split. Obviously, the option to pivot up into mid four loud here. Five deep, doesn't connect. They waited out with 45 seconds. Tens is normally good for one here, but has to get off the angle. Dodges it. Stun though in his face. Is it going to be util once more? Have TP to just disengage. Zekin goes down. Oh, punish! But here we go. He split it up, dividing the fight, and maybe he can create a bit of an angle to try and get something done. No, Kawasin takes it away from him. Sassy from on high. Spike it's down two years. But that two is before. Simply, simply filthy. I don't see a way back in for Sentinels here. They'd have to make magic happen from Sassy and John Beauty. Oh, for the guns. No one playing in hell. They don't want to get spammed down here. Kawasin still holding for this flash as well. There it is. Finding them up, delaying. John QT just making the clearance out towards Cap, but this is more and more looking like he might need to save, as I say that. Hello. But no, not enough done here. If John QT maybe got something else, he's just got to back away. And Sassy can't save the Odin, can't save the Op. The kill onto Zekin is outrageous. Because when you look at the way that Loud's comp is structured, they don't have a recon to push away the opper, they don't have a drone to push yeah, him away, they just there. have to rely on flashes. So when Zekin gets pushed off the angle, he can re-peek. And if you're Loud, you just have to hit the rifle shot. If you don't hit the rifle shot against the opper, you're stuffed. And wow. that's the shot that, two, that Cowan Zine hits to punish Zekin as he tries to get back onto the angle. You see the little message in chat there, actually, from somebody on Sentinels. Didn't catch who it was saying, this util is insane. <laughs> yeah. Just appreciation, you know. Well, they're trying to come up with ideas on the fly, aren't they? Yeah. Sentinels really getting tested here. Oh, Tens just slipping out. Still money for the goodbye here. Second this time. Again with the off, but he's stunned up. This is the common position he's been playing. Flashes, sent flying with the molly as well. He can't repeat off into heaven. Sassy's here. The Odin. What kind of noise Q is he waiting for? The plant? Yes, he is. There's one. No chance to try and walk through the door. There was a timing attempted by QCK. Up top, though. Here it is. Paranoia. Dash Big forwards flash. into the smoke. No real damage. There's a follow up. Another flash made on top of it. It's a masterclass of a concoction. But Sen, they take the site by storm. 
That's what Senna been looking for. The retake. And, and finding ways to make their utility work for them, right? I mean, this is a treat between both of these teams. You're watching a team in real time having to adjust for this brand new comp. Cloud pulling up stuff that has very good ideas. I mean, it seems robust. It does. It does. And I think Sentinel's there. One of the things that worked for them, they found a pace before Loud could really get their util out. Right? They found a little gap where Loud were getting ready to throw counter utility and they hit them with a paranoia and instantly followed up with a KO flash yeah. and seconds in. He's Doesn't in the so fast. Exactly. But still, it's 5 5. Usually we would be saying on Ascent, wow, what a lovely attack side from Loud. They've got five rounds. This is really good. But we just have no concept of how good this comp is going to be on defense. Maybe Loud need more on their attack side. It's actually really hard to tell. And I think Sen won't feel comfortable at any scoreline from here because they're still going to have to think really heavily about what their approach is on the other side of the map too. Yeah. So this gets... The danger is never going to stop. It's going to be the same as Split, I think. Just anyone's game the whole way through. But Loud's economy is knocked down quite a bit in this round. Not that that matters too much. We've seen Sadek get really creative with his ways of turning the smaller weaponry into picks. Both teams have. I set up with the Odin just in case there's a bit of spam coming his way. Just hoping to counter it. Deep drone to set up second now with the off. Takes the tag onto Les. Pushes him away. Zekin can hold that space into B main. That's going to give them a nice little avenue. But mid is being taken now. Paranoia from Tens goes a bit of miss. And Celsius is thinking, in theory, they could be walking spawn right yeah, now. Yeah, just like Phoenix Wolf. Yeah, uh, Tens and Sassy Good looking for it. And there it is. Oh, this is a fake. Flash through. It's going to be pulling players as well. All eyes towards mid here. Just seeking to try and stop this one. But just a K around the side Tens. He deals with it. Might be a fake, but it didn't really pull the players like they were expecting. But they are slowly Destroy. creeping. Going through tree. Side by side here, John QT. He's still alive. Knife didn't get off here, so he still has his abilities. Might get awkward! Not for him, though. Deals with it with two players falling. Eventually traded. Less than two years are alive. Smoke up here, but Less is weak. Tens. I'm going to try and make a play here. Plant. Will come through. There's a pit available for less, but I don't think he wants to use it when he's that low. Should be sent in those rounds. Barring a miracle from the loud players. A bit of spam here will do wonders. The smoke blocks that dart potentially here. Close to the side. That's a trade. Into Jen, and yet everybody accounted for. Sent. Find that sixth round. And it's the Sentinel utility from John QT that stops that fake being useful. Because as QCK sent it down like Market and then down towards, uh, towards Spawn, the, the idea is that Sadak wants to lead the rest of the team through Catwalk. But they ran into the Alarm Bar and the Turret, and John QT then kills two. Your fake hasn't really worked. You haven't gained enough space off the back of it. Yeah. So it's a cute idea, but Sen had the read. Sassy's got up to 20 kills. <laughs> he's feasting. Yeah, he's not stopping anytime soon. Thank you. Null Commando online and John so Cutie awesome. in the radius. Where's the knife? Back and away. Playing really far back, actually. Almost anticipating this one. Yeah, he is. So he's still going to be able to get those kills with mollies off. There's a stun towards the side here with a smoke propped up. He's spraying away, damage, ooh! Tail end of the bullets. So he's lucky to be alive here, two health. Oh, 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 oh. Yay, he did it! Really. Gonna get red back up and be on full HP. That's awesome! That is a crazy play. Still, all this usual being combined. It's a Viper's Pit as well. This is a foul concoction, isn't it? All the way forwards here, just trying to fight over the Killjoy. Set up this lockdown, the lockdown. close in the corner. They're really defending this one. And the team! There was a chance! But that's what it will get left at. Second, ripping off the heads. Sadak towards the side. It's a double face. The send to claim it. Seven to five in this first half. This has just been electric. And Sentinels again with the pace increase. That round was so quick. Fighting inside Switching the Viper side. roll, making sure that the lockdown could go off. Really good defense of that lockdown. Making sure that there was no opportunity for Loud to win that.
And, and the Viper post plant seemed potent on the pistol round, and yet we hadn't really seen it at any other point in the map. Really 7 did. 5. Who, who's in the lead? I have no idea. It's so difficult to tell. Well, earlier we spoke with Laos IGL Sadak about why they're a team that is fearless, and it might have something to do with these comps. I'm not too sure. Somos un chimi que realmente jogamos sem medo. Por eso que nosso, sempre que começamos um jogo, a gente grita sem medo. E isso tentamos sempre levar em tudo que a gente faz. De testar novos personagens, entender novas metas, entender novos estilos de jogo. E é uma coisa que realmente é, tem definido muito o nosso time. Somos um time que você nunca consegue esperar algo é, normal. Porque não sabemos se vamos aparecer com outra composição, não sabemos se vamos jogar de outro estilo diferente. Oh, un chimis en medio, mel. Well, yeah, I mean, you just don't know which direction they're going to be going into when they're pulling out comps like this. And, you know, to refer back to what you were asking a bit earlier, we don't really know which side this favors. We don't know if this loud comp is going to have so many more different looks as well on the defensive side. In theory, they got a lot of the delay with the Viper Mollies, the Phoenix, all these flashes to try and push them back. Yeah, it's hard to know. I think they'll be playing a lot of, like, almost trap plays, like re-clear, yeah, There's yeah. some really nasty stun lineups. Breach on this map is very good. It's just hard to come up with a comp that um, is worth moving away from the meta. But you can see <laughs> that Sentinels are struggling. They have managed to lead the half, despite Loud also winning Pistol. So that's, that's excellent. They really were coming up with good ideas to increase the pace, to play for those A retakes. Massive test. Yeah, this next pistol round is going to be a big one. If Lau can get them both, then that is going to boost their win rate of this composition massively. Yeah. But to be honest, the, the default composition is default for a reason because it just gets so much value. So if Sen and John Cuthy in particular on the attack side can IGL themselves some good setups, we could see Sentinels coming away with a bit of an upset. I would say that it would be an upset, actually, for Sen to win on Ascent here and take us to a third. But it would be amazing for Sentinels because their Sunset has also looked sublime yeah. running that Breach Fade comp. It's a great series that we've got. Already is. <laughs> this is a stacked group. The it game is. later should also be ridiculous. Probably the most stacked group that we've got in America's, I think. But here we go. Timers ticking down, beginning it around. No fast plays in sight. Les has bought a Sheriff. I mean, it's like the most defensive agent that yep. Loud have, and he's chosen not it's to go with Viper Mollies. Incredibly based. <laughs> yeah, I love pulling surprised. out the, the Sheriff purchase on the pistol. Jump spot, two years sees it. They want to punish this, actually. There's a dash active second. He's waiting for the flash as well into his own smoke. Gonna be the counter play. Damage through the smoke. Sadak lucky. He can just hop away with barely an injury. Sells is looking to see if there's going to be any kind of pop flash play through the smoke. I think that's extremely likely. I mean, they still have so Stun, much use paranoia, it. nades, it's all being combined! And Loud got everything to deal with this one. Smoke in their face as well. Celsius is completely isolated away. Damage being done. John QT knocked down to absolutely almost anything. They're just spamming away into the smoke. Maybe Celsius can get lucky. Bit of RNG, maybe with a clacky. Oh, he's dodging all his bullets well enough, but still only good for the one. It's traded out wide. Tarek dealing with it, sticking it. Two years, there's only two bullets left. And it's not going to be enough. Pistol round for Loud. And I gotta agree with Sentinels. This util is insane. Yeah. I mean, the setup, the, the Phoenix Mollies even just on their own are cooking. I mean, that's like almost the last piece of util that you think to optimize when you're thinking about running but a Phoenix on the map, but it's, it's yeah. getting so much value. It's the first line of it. Forces them into hell if they are there. Then the Kaonade comes in. Yeah. Forces them into that with the paranoia of the blind. They don't know what's occurring. Yeah. And you just don't know which areas Loud are gonna send the utility because Sen haven't practiced against this before. Yeah. So you don't know where's safe. But yeah, that's loud with both pistol rounds, which is going to be huge for them. Stun refight. Less. It's there, but eventually respecting them. It's backing away here, including the dash being used, but... At the end of the day, still just an eco for Sen and a refight. Less is just re-clearing it immediately. He is fearless. The more kills that QCK gets, he could very quickly get up to an ultimate on the bonus. Two players spotted. This is Les just pushing them down, man. I mean, with the Spectre from this range, still risky business, but he's getting away with it. Them down. Them's 
CP deep Man, in the tree. He's caught. Spotted now, though. Yeah. Careful. Didn't get caught by the knife, but got caught with the eyeballs. That's nice. Less being punished, they might think the B is open. Kawanzin's still home, though. There's a lot of util to his name on top of it, so... And just while we have a bit of downtime in this round, look at the Viper Wall. Uh, this is not a common one. I haven't seen too many other teams use this, but it lets you fight mid. It has a bit of protection over catwalk. Good protection for B lane. Left. Like, if you exec B, you have to go through it twice, through oh. lane as well. Disgusting Viper Wall that Les has cooked up. Difficult challenge here. 17 seconds. Door closed. Second. They can get a plant. They can get a plant, yeah. With the door closed, they're not going to suspect Ten anything. That, okay, with well, a market player, Chunky 2 rejoins him onto the site. That's the next here. Enough time for the plant on top of it. Had to be extra sure there was nobody back site. Swapping around the guns for the healthier player. John QT, what can you do? There's four players that are running at them in a whole cacophony of utility waiting for them. Flash, just dodge for a moment, but you can't dodge the bullets. QCK. Nasty, nasty stuff. Up to the ult. Yeah, orb max in again. They let QCK take first contact. He's already picked up a couple earlier on in the round. And now the Phoenix are online for the bonus round. What do you do with this though? Like, you don't want to push out too far on a scent defense. You don't have a dash to follow up on any of the flash. Maybe you just use it for retake. Yeah, refighting main as well. Maybe if you hit him using the util. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in there based off a stun and a flash. Yeah. And not be worried about losing a player. Or possibly you could tiles crunch by running your <laughs> Phoenix down. Wait mid. a second. Where's just, all this guy? Just hold W. Is, there's three players at the top mid. This Suda maybe gonna be gonna be waiting potentially. Sassy's here. He's holding for all of this. A flash on top of it, just combining all of it. <laughs> and they're out of there. Yeah, they don't bad. want anything to do with it. And a different Viper Wall from Les that actually covered top mid, so they weren't worried about that position. This and they have to is, go through it twice once to say game main. Yeah, it's nasty. And look, Loud are ready to try and collect the, the React A push. Already there. <laughs> They're already... There's four of them in tree. All right, but now... Now it comes down to the mid-rounding. And Sentinels, <laughs> slowing things down, are going to spread back out around the map. Tens is staying A main, though, so they've always got the opportunity to go back to A. I think Loud will be pretty happy to play a B retake at this spot, though, yeah. especially with the Phoenix ult. So Sadak doesn't need to call for his team to spread. In the middle of all of that, Sen, they lost mid control. They lost B main control. They're gonna have to clear this together. But if they use util, they reveal their hands. So they're just walking for now, waiting for it. Now oh, there's a flash. That was used actually sent out flying, I think, by Sadak. And he got all the noise cues. Updraft on top of it. Now the drone being used to send straight through. The deep smoke to actually just try and play out. That was two years left. sending that one. Yeah, threatening that Sadak could try to get in. But they're not going to go for it. No, it's going to be the full retake, and why not? UCK has the Phoenix ult. Yeah, I think this could get dangerous, even with the lower weaponry. It's going to be on 10, so I think. Playing himself there into B main. Flash, Sen flying, so now he's revealed his position. There's Sen fighting over it. Really aggressive into the front of the boathouse. Not going to be shying away. Beautiful kills from Les, but it's not really quite good enough because it's just left it up to QCK. Flashing through. Dealt with! <laughs> This kid can drag. He really can. What a nice round by Sen. Now Loud are going to get rifles on board. This game still dangling on a thread. Less back to running that B wall. So maybe the A wall is only for pushing aggressively. And I think John called a beautiful round there. Really making sure that he didn't yeah. fall into the trap that Sadak had set up. And Kaplan's pretty happy. And that presence of mind to really Stashy slow down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he is copying us. <laughs> Standard dart. Make sure to clear oh, through into mid. Mistake. No kill though. Lucky to be alive. QCK. Yeah. They, give up, they give up oh. all mid control based off the back of that though. And, and one of the big things about this Viper wall is that QCK can call for it to drop so that he can pick the timings that are best for him. It always favors the team that controls the wall. But now that he's been pushed so far back, that's not an option. Is John just setting up for a lockdown play B main here? Kawazin is playing the role of a turret here. And when he takes contact, there's going to be spam from Les with the Odin. 
Paranoia forced, forced out over towards Catwalk as Loud had that area of the map threatened. Sending it now. Yeah. Locked down through B main. Seconds through as well for the B split. Extra elements into the mix. Less running back. Is there going to be the gap to play in? He's There's blind. a Molly. Really good timing from that one. And he is fully blinded up. That's 10 to the util. Excellent stuff. 30 seconds left. Great positioning from Celsius. He's got a second to swing off as well. Yeah, man down now. After shot flash. Looks like a fast play into this one, but they weren't accounting for that close corner as well that's being played because the, the door it hasn't been opened. Didn't break the market door. And Sadak now has to consider what the hell do I want to do here? I've got a judge. Kawazin 2, you've got to save it. Only 350 credits. Second round in a row here where John has cooked up a really nice counter to what Loud are doing. Sentinels are taking quite a lot of mid control. Threatening cat, keeping players pinned on A, and then they manage to end B. And there's nothing that the loud anchors can do. You know, they didn't have a setup to be able to break the lockdown. No ability to fight over B main. And that's that's a freebie. Yeah. Especially with Les getting stuck in the corner. It felt like Les was expecting to be able to get a kill with his Odin by spamming. And so hoping that he would just go one for one, even though he got detained. Ooh. But this comp is getting locked out. If you thought that all of the flash utility would help you retake B, that is proven not to be the case so far. And Senna squeezing out some good value from the default composition. Just by bringing his rounds to a crawl. Bai is a little bit odd. Just with the guns that were saved by Loud. Not everybody has a rifle. Again, wait in and out this time. A deep dart. Taken out. Sentinel's going to be aware of the fact that there could be a player pushed down mid, but it's just second who's posted up there. Now, later in, about 20 seconds in, we're going to see that three clearance into main. Got flash play. Sadak listening for the noise cues. Sassy meant to miss that jump. <laughs> it's actually a very elaborate bait. You wouldn't uh -huh. understand. Uh -huh. It's hard to do. At least the silent jump. The silent one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so drone cancelled. Sadak gets a little bit of information, but... This isn't where Zekin is. This isn't where the team is planning to finish. So things are still being disguised here for Sentinels. Might is be there, running into the judge. Is there going to be... Oh, a boy. Player? No, Sadak. Sadak, Sadak is there. The spike's been dropped down on top of it. UCK with the molly. Denying any chance of that. Trying to be a split into the site here. That's an no come on! And a shotgun's repositioned! That's dirty, man. It's disgusting. It's devastating. Turn the TV's forwards, though. Into his own smoke. That's matters into his own hands. And he wants to, to have another go of it. Sadak, shutting it down with a right foot upgrade. And yet he's pulled down to nowhere. That's a filthy good ace from Sadak. The first couple of kills just with a good read. And then the reposition yeah. is great as well. Sentinels were not fast enough to capitalize on the info about the judge being in one area. Sadak had already got the read. Sadak's mechanics look so clean. They look so good. So damn good. I thought about power. They're getting their money's worth. Oh, they certainly <laughs> are, yeah. Zekin's got the knives this round, and they're not playing very passively to start the round. They're, Ooh, they're all the way in. QCK, though. Flashed and connected, I believe. They were sent flying over to the top, and there's a lot of plays in mid. They're ready to receive this one, but they're just trying to reactively take that space. In through B, plant's probably going to be going down. Tens is cooking. Tens is more than cooking. Maybe overheating. Spike planted. But you have to take risks when you lose a player like that. Just trying to make the most of this. John QT forced to run to the side. Paranoia sweeping out. through, and he's worried about the market players pushing forward. There's two more players to meet him. They're more than aware of it. That is that nice at least to just grab the one, but it leaves it just out of Sassy now, and it's a 1v4. The guy has been a menace, but what can you really do? Running and cutting seems to be the aim of the game. Deals with him. Loud, equalizing to 9 to 9. Speeding things up on the defense worked when they could put more pressure onto the loud post fight. But speeding things up at the start of the round is just going to run you into traps that you can't anticipate when you play against a comp that you've never seen before. Like there, they're not thinking about the fact that QCK actually has a little pocket with the Viper Wall, so he can't get flashed. Right, look at this at the start. He's playing anti-flash inside the Viper Wall. Like there's, yeah. there's just no shot there that you're catching him. So... 
you know, that's one round where there's just too many people fighting over mid and Sentinel didn't realize. They put their eggs in an explosive basket and it blew up in their face. So I think the more cautious approach is generally going to be better for Sentinel. Here, the recon darts got broken, so Sen should expect someone to be playing close mid. No way. No way. It's a refight out after trying to play it through into Kat. Not getting punished. Still, they hold their ground. Spike dropped down onto Kat. They weren't expecting it, but that's the power of this comp. You have so many flashes. And you can double pick... control it. You get exactly pick and choose your timings. Yeah, you pick when the Viper wall goes down, and they just exploded onto them. Now Sen are left reeling. I mean, they're trying to take some map control on the other side, assuming that Loud are playing over the spike. I mean, the, the spike looks like a secondary objective at the moment. Yeah, it does. It's littered around the map. Tens has got the ult to pick it back up if they want to make a go of it. Gonna see if they can take out some of these players as well. They're just anchoring, but less tucked to the side. Flash play just wasn't accounted for. Tens is all over the place. What a read in this round from Loud. Yeah. They fight over mid, which is where Sentinels were trying to go in the previous round. And then they know that they're going B. They just feel it in their bones that Sen are going to finish B and try and use the Omenol to pick up the spike. And so Loud had four players ready to collect that. Look at this, though. The Viper Wall goes down. Two players pushing out with the Paranoia from Catwalk and then flashes in mid. <laughs> and Les is just chuckling to himself Looking as John icy. Cutie walks out. Looking icy with it. A lot of ults for Loud here. Now the map might be just getting out of hand. The Sentinels, potentially even the series second. All of these fast plays, they're just not quite working. Loud have got the correct response. Again, Loud are not playing in uncomfortable territory right now. They know what to do against this default comp. So all of the protocols seem really good. Drone to be used. Duration running out though. Tag up. This has pulled people away from B. That was the goal. Look at that. Paranoia aftershock just to really pull that util out. But guess what? Like you're saying, spike. Opposite end of the map here. Drop the spike. Sen's going to be potentially clearing the back of the side here with his ult. Yes, he is. Sends it in. Doesn't see anybody for now. Waiting it out. They're just not confident that the fakers work. They're taking so long to get in. And what this means is that the retake is going to come through quickly and with a lot of power because everyone from Loud is going to be in position, ready to go as soon as the spike is They're all playing in main. Yeah. This is the adjustment. Well, they have to play away from the reach ult, don't they? Exactly, yeah. I know the util is just far too much. Hunter's Fury from far, far away here. Rolling Thunder on top of it, tries to set it up. Colliding and collapsing, but those aren't really kills. Just dropping a player as well. And the ult that's from on top of it, Kawazine, is just running all the way forward. Another bit of util in his hands, but his teammates are just watching the right angles, collecting up the kills of the fuse coming out. And they need to try and stop this one. Just can't get past less. That next line of defense, just watching for the right angles. The 11th round for Loud, and they are running away with us now. This is the series in their grasp. And Sen have a good idea there. We want to play off-site. We want to avoid the Breach Art and the Phoenix Art, and then we want to be able to fight back in. But they're too late. The timing is off. They weren't able to help their players that were on-site. And instead, we just saw three people kind of turtled up in B-Main with no way of being able to stop this Diffuse. At this point, the round's already over, despite yeah. the fact that Sen still have most of their team alive. And Loud are throwing too many threats out there for Sen to deal with. We're back into the round. Zelsis has his ult online. Plays into mid. Op, though. For QCK, you're not going to expect this, are you? The thing is, too, now the KO ult is actually not hugely beneficial. It doesn't turn off kills or utility, cypher trips, that kind of thing. Oh. Spots it. Offloading the pit here. Ult was not online here. Updraft. Dash now active too, but how do they want to clear this one with the Paranoia? Drone potentially available to them, but does it really cut into it? Zelsus has been dropped less. He's got a shorty in his hands! Adjustment! But only two bullets to really do the damage, and they're dropping all sorts of players. John QT gets the res up onto Zelsus, but it's just a second lease of life on him that's quickly ended. Second. So much util. Enough to just clear him all the way out. The Flash is sent flying over the top, and they don't want anything to do with this site. Look how good the Phoenix Wall even is there to threaten that they could be flooded in. Back to away. Has taken position and got information. Fully aware. Senna getting herded around the map. 
Now just into mid, playing around. Only 30 seconds left. Two-year spots. Just one of the heads crossing over towards the A site. Sends out the smokes as well. All this delay. And uh, even buying time as well for this rotation. Sadak is going to be here. Breaking the window. Just trying to run it forwards as well. But no trade in sight. Two years. Seeking the reposition. He's playing with the rest of his team now. Maybe a plan to Nia with the nade. Not quite. Doesn't quite catch. Still, they have that player advantage. And Loud should be set up. Two flashes, a stun. Loud get into position. And here it is. Stun's there. Dart to account for it. Three players at the door though, and it's only Zekin just holding close to the corner. He's just immediately cleaned up. Shakhtar didn't clean up the kill, but it's only just Sassy collecting it, not planted for them. Sadak defusing, sticking, knows his teammates have got it all the way through. He's got half running backwards and forwards, half on it already. Oh, it's all over. The util is simply too much to overcome. Match point. That's going to force a timeout from Sentinels. They've lost five rounds in a row. Three of them to retakes. They can't stop it. And you're right, the utility is powerful, but also look at the way that Kawanzin gets into a door. That's not a flash. He's just brute force bulldozing his way through, yeah. trusting in his teammates to trade him out. And this is the thing that kept me having confidence in Loud, even despite all of the swirling conversation about Aspas being gone, is that, dude, the rest of the players on this team are nuts. Yeah, I mean, Kawan when you Zin's think about- outrageous. Les is outrageously talented. With Loud, the amount of titles they came close to, the amount of titles they got, it wasn't just the Aspas show. No. Listen, he stole the spotlight, don't get me wrong, a lot of the times- And he but, is amazing. But the players on Loud, the rest of them, are just world-class caliber players, through and through. Loud are probably the most consistent team we've ever had in Valorant. You know, in terms of the teams that they've lost to, they don't get upset very often. They only lose to top level teams. Barring, you know, a hiccup here or there like Copenhagen a couple of years ago. But Sen are pushing them. It looks winnable. It really does. This is a clash between two top level teams. But there have just been, by the look of it, too many questions thrown at them with this Thank unorthodox you. composition. Yeah. And Sen are struggling to keep their heads afloat. Treading water right now. This could be it. Slipping point for the map, for the series. Loud. That driving seat. And Sen flying. Sarak. Talk about unconventional. I mean, he's got the operator in his hand, but he's going to respect it when he hears his utility mm. being used. zine has got a great stun line up here, and oh. he doesn't even need it. Who's expecting Sadak to pick up the orb? Aspas who? You just don't expect it. First kill for Loud. Tiny angle for QCK, just enough. Collects another. Three players left to stand against this one. Three players from Sed to try and stay alive in the series. But they're being worked, pushed and pulled into all the places and Loud are expecting it now. Paranoia in the hands of two years. Jump spot from Kawazin, waiting for the contact play with Flash over the top. Sending the util, another kill, claimed to stand. 40 seconds left, it's desperation. Contact plays through and through. Hunting for a kill. And it looks like vindication left. for Loud. Massive player advantage, a match point, the stun as well. Pressure on the Zelsis, time running low. All the awareness in the world, 20 seconds, like you said, the time running low, close to the corner, it's only Zelsis. The impossibility to really do the most now. Spike in his hands, but players are quickly approaching his position, and all it takes is that. Loud, take it, two to zero. With Sadak securing the final kill, they could scream it from the rooftops, how dare you doubt me? Every single time. Sadak is the truth, he is the kingmaker. He can take all of these players and turn them into god-tier squads. The level of play here and the level of creativity was outrageous. There were doubters, as there were last year, when Kaunzin and Tuiz got introduced and Sassi and Pankada disappeared, but it is looking like Loud are not going to miss a step. No. And that is not to say by any means that Sentinels play badly here.
By the way, again, Sassy still with that 0% win rate, playing Solva for Sentinels in BCT, despite dropping 24 kills. Map MVP for Ascent. Most, is... most of those, though, coming on the defense side, they couldn't really get him activated on attack. But, I mean, it is just ludicrous. Despite that, I mean, that was an absolute treat. You're seeing really two teams that really are at the top of the pack. And Loud, you know, reigning defending title holders for Americas. Seeking to really make their mark this year once more. Again, why we were mentioning the doubters. It was set against them by losing Aspas. Can't blame them to a part, but still, this team has always been more than the sum of their parts, and you've seen it here. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic way of summing this team up, and especially what we saw today, because the teamwork element on Split was one of the biggest things that pushed them ahead. Yeah. So many moments where they're tight with each other, creating unlosable situations for Squash, and then also having those big moments, like Sadak here, and Sadak in the final two rounds of Split as well. I mean, he was a man possessed in this game. A man possessed. Nasty stuff. This group is deadly, man. Deadly. Loud. They move their way forwards. Just one step forwards as well. Yeah. One more to go, I think, to make the playoffs. But they're going to be yeah, meeting. Nasty teams. Meeting as well the potential winner of our next match is coming up on top of it. So, which, yeah. Which could be Aspas with Leviathan. Potentially. I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be just something great? That would be heat. Yeah. Man, that would be heat. Insane. Let's send it down to Liz, who's down on the stage for the Verizon post-match interview. Thank you so much. I am here with the winner of Sentinels versus Loud Tui's Ryder Reen. I give it up for Tui. <laughs> now, I have to ask you about the Phoenix. What was going, what was, what was the decision making about bringing Phoenix to Ascent? I have to ask you about the Phoenix. What was the decision to bring Phoenix? Man, Matias is a guy very crazy. He has a lot of ideas. Mas tem um porém por trás, mas eu não, eu não vou falar, mas é uma estratégia muito bem pensada. So, Sadak is a, uh, it's a very crazy guy, he's nuts. Uh, there is a whole strategy behind it, this decision, but I'm not gonna share with you. Okay. Sorry, guys. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> Um, this was a very close back and forth. Did you expect it to be this close against them, or did you expect more of a sweep? Foi um jogo bem apertado, né? Vocês estavam ali pescoço com pescoço. Você esperava que ia ser assim, ou você estava aguardando um, um jogo mais fácil para vocês? Pô, acho que todo jogo aqui vai ser muito difícil, é, ainda mais para ser estreia. Estreia é sempre difícil, particularmente eu acho bem difícil estreia. Depois fica mais tranquilo, mas foi um bom jogo. Eu esperava que ia ser bem pegado mesmo. Well, it was the first game, and the first game is always like nervous. We we you know, looking forward to it, but um, I was expecting to be a neck-to-neck a, a -neck game. So in the end, it worked out, right? <laughs> yes, respect the Sentinels. Um, really quickly, QCK, talking about QCK, how is he doing? How are you playing with him? How is he joining the team? Como é que tá o novo integrante do time, QCK? Pô, Quick é um cara muito bom, é o nosso GOAT. Ele tá fazendo muito bem a função dele, é um cara com uma personalidade diferente. É... E é muito bom ter um cara desse no time e ele tá somando muito. Yeah, he's great. He's uh, he has a very different uh, personality and he's adding a lot to the team. All right. So your next opponent will either be Hundred Thieves or Leviathan. Are you expecting anything? Anything you would like to say to them? Leviathan, Hundred Thieves. Alguma coisa que você está esperando desse desse confronto? Alguma coisa que você quer falar para eles? Mano, acho que vai ser um jogo muito difícil, acho que vai ser bem apegada, mas eu vou estar torcendo pro meu amigo, meu ex-companheiro de time, aspas, que eu gosto muito dele. E espero enfrentar ele, que vai ser uma partida bem da hora. Well, it's gonna be a great game to watch, and I'm, I'm gonna be rooting for my former, uh, you know, colleague, aspas. So I, I think it's gonna be a great game to watch. All right, well, one more time, everyone, for two E's, the winner of Loud vs. Sentinels. Thank you, guys. We're going to throw to a break, but stay right there because we have 100 Thieves versus Leviathan, and you don't want to miss it.
Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> <laughs>